Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to <coughs> St. Mary's Vicarage in Six Penny Handley. Uh, lovely to see you all this morning on this very sunny day, and a great day too. It is the feast day of St. John the Baptist today, the birth of St. John the Baptist. Uh, but to be honest with you, um, it's uh, uh, where I would like to be today, or last night, um, is in Spain with my uh, Spanish family uh, because it's a huge um, feast day uh, in Spain. Um, it just sort of almost gets forgotten uh, in this country unless you're from a sort of particularly high church background. But in Spain, uh, as per usual, um, uh, they don't need uh, much of an excuse to have a party. <clears throat> and the festival or the feast day of uh, San Juan is just an amazing festival. Um, morning, Bill. Good morning, Peter. Um, a few years ago, uh, oh, nearly 10 years ago, I think, or about 10 years ago, um, I had a sabbatical. And the first part of my sabbatical, I spent a month driving um, across France and Spain in my little two-seater Lotus 7, <clears throat> uh, visiting all the holy sites and shrines that I could um, in uh, France and Spain, places like Lourdes, uh, Teze, um, all sorts of <coughs> wonderful places. Um, and uh, I managed to uh, be in, um, uh, gosh, I can't remember where I was now, uh, the city. Anyhow, I was in Spain for this feast day and um, Segovia is where I was. Uh, so I was in Segovia and it's just an amazing feast day. And it starts off it, the night before, the eve of the feast. And um, what happens is all the um, shops shut up early and in the big <coughs> towns, they have a huge bonfire uh, in the main square. Smaller villages would have a bonfire elsewhere. But I mean, it's a really big bonfire, fireworks and all sorts of things. And that really marks the beginning of the um, celebrations. It's an incredible um, thing. And in true Spanish fashion, it just goes on um, all night. Um, and uh, I remember I sort of joined in the festivities till about 1am, but I was aware of the fact that I had a 200 mile drive uh, the next morning. So um, couldn't partake in uh, too much uh, drink, but just sort of joined in the festivities. What was interesting, the following morning, which would have been today, the 24th, the actual um, feast day, I sort of got up and went to uh, one of the sort of Spanish uh, cafes near the little hotel I was staying in um, to to have breakfast. Uh, and it was wonderful. I was sort of sitting outside the cafe uh, watching the entire Spanish population dealing with the most huge hangover possible. Um, but then the, the partying continues uh, uh, today because in Spain, the 24th of June is a national holiday. Wouldn't it be great if we had a national holiday in the UK for the birth of St John um, the Baptist. Anyhow, um, it's his uh, feast day today, but I remember that with fondness and uh, uh, would love to um, get back to Spain uh, again sometime for that um, feast day because it's, it's just incredible. Anyhow, uh, we've got uh, weird and wonderful things happening here in Handley. Um, I'm sure you've seen the uh, pictures posted of our new crop circle, which has appeared on the uh, field going up to the road to the A345. A, uh, and um, yeah, quite uh, incredible. I think that must have appeared uh, a couple of nights ago, maybe the summer solstice when it, when it appeared. Um, this morning as I was sitting outside in the garden having my morning cup of coffee, uh, I think within about 20 minutes, I counted three or four planes uh, coming overhead and circling and in fact I can hear one now um, obviously coming to take photographs of the um, uh, of the crop circle so that's great and um, I'm going to try obviously it's much better if you can see it from the air but I'm going to try a little bit later on to see if I can get on a slightly higher level <laughs> around Handley and get a good photograph of it uh, myself so once again uh, we're famous for our crop circles. Um, I joked with um, uh, Bishop Karen last night, the Bishop of Sherborne, because she's encouraging us to set up um, prayer spaces 
outside uh, either in churchyards or um grounds or whatever so i joked last night that um um as per usual hanley um <clears throat> we had um surpassed all possible all possibilities um with our new outdoor prayer space uh, in the form of the crop circle <coughs> in the field <laughs> so um uh, quite exciting stuff um yeah so uh, also yesterday didn't quite go to plan for, for me as you may have seen uh my uh little mx5 was due its uh mot um i keep it in pretty pristine condition it doesn't go out on the roads in the winter when there's um uh, water or ice or uh, salt on on the roads and when i uh, bought it uh, about three odd years ago i got rid of my little caterham that i just mentioned and uh, put the money in the bank and, and bought one of these nxis they're, they're a lot of cheap fun and um, I, I bought it from a friend of mine who works in a garage and we checked it over really thoroughly because they can be rust buckets sometimes if you're not careful and everything looked good. Um, so yesterday I was just expecting uh, the normal process of trundle the car off to the um, MOT place. It was going to have an oil change and a, a service, uh, very, very straightforward. And then I got a phone call um, a couple of hours later saying it had failed uh, with rust and that really worried me. And um, uh, yes, I've got a hole uh, underneath the sill. Now it's going off uh, after this broadcast to a nice chap not too far away who's going to try and sort it out today. Um, we're hoping that it is, we've spotted it early and it is just a small hole because unfortunately it's where the um, soft top drains. So you have two drain holes for the soft top and water, if they get blocked, water can end up in between the outer skin of the um, vehicle and the sort of inner structure and it sits there. And, and it rusts from the inside out. Um, we think what's happened here is some of the undercoating, the special stuff they put on the underneath of cars has come away and it's actually rusted from the inside, outside in, which is better. Um, we've had a bit of a look at it and um, hopefully it just needs a small um, piece cutting out and re-welding in. But the danger is when you start cutting, if it has gone the other way, I could discover that half my car is eaten away and um, that's very worrying because that's either very, very expensive or it's a journey to the um, scrapyard, which is odd because if you see seen my MX-5 driving around, of course, it, it looks absolutely fantastic, but um, it's what's underneath that counts. Anyhow, we shall see what happens later on uh, today. As I said, I've taken it up to the road to a place that restores classic cars and things like that. And um, he did seem to think it was a fairly easy job, so I'm presuming as um, he's seen many, many things. And even when I told him it was an MX-5, he knew exactly where the hole was gonna be before I'd even showed it. So it's obviously something he's, um, he's used to. Anyhow, that's the way things go sometimes, but hopefully it'll all be back on the road um, uh, on Friday, um, fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> if not, I'm gonna have to have a bit of a rethink. Right, um, so Feast of uh, John the Baptist uh, today, as I've mentioned. And of course, the other uh, exciting news, um, though slightly complicated, is of course the Prime Minister announced yesterday that um, worship in church can commence again uh, on what would be from the 4th of July, or the, what would be the 5th. However, I was uh, thinking about the feast day of St John. I was thinking with all the pubs opening up again on Saturday, uh, the 4th of July, is anybody going to want to come to church or be in a fit state to come to church on the Sunday morning? Uh, maybe we'll see the whole of the U uh, of England uh, having a collective hangover on the Sunday morning. Anyhow, it is good news that we can potentially uh, start worship again in our churches, um, but it is going to be a bit complicated. I've already um, had some emails sent to me with sort of some provisional guidelines and thoughts. We're waiting for the official ones. Um, we are, <clears throat> there is a limit to numbers. <coughs> um, in the, you know, what Mr. Johnson has sort of said is there's this number of 30. It hasn't been very clear exactly what that means. Um, some people are equating that to weddings, that you can only have 30 people at a wedding. Others are saying that that is um, to do with uh, worship. Actually, what will dictate the number of people we can actually have in church is the whole distancing issue. And um, even if we um, 
you know, go down to a metre distancing. That isn't, to be honest with you, going to really help us very much with fixed pews. Uh, and when Sue and I sort of looked around the church, we worked out you could probably realistically have two people to a pew. And that's every other pew. So you have to keep a pew empty behind and in front. And you can have two people side by side in a pew. So um, uh, getting 30 people in um, some churches. So, for example, 30 people in Pentridge would be impossible. Um, we might realistically be able to get... Uh, 10 to 15 in Pentridge, which is sort of <coughs> round about their average congregation, probably a little bit more in um, Handley. Um, there's also the issue that we need to know about, which is to do with um, singing as well, because if you sing out or you project your um, voice, um, that can call, potentially cause the virus to spread more. Also means things about public speaking and sermons and such like, so we need some guidance about that. There may also be requirements for us to, in a sense, um, sterilise the church before we have an act of worship and afterwards, as I don't think we're particularly geared up to have teams of people come along with um, antibacterial spray and wipe down all the pews and do everything like that. We will have to sort of probably do the 72 hour thing, which is that whichever church is having the service in, the church will have to be uh, kept locked for 72 hours prior to the service and then after the service again for 72 hours well <coughs> you know you're talking about three days there so it basically technically means that for one act of worship you're more or less putting that church out of action for a week so you know it's it's not as straightforward as um, as it potentially seems uh, of course we also want to be able to live stream the services from church because we appreciate and I appreciate that there will be people who, for all sorts of reasons, will be nervous about coming back to church and being in a group environment uh, where the potential for um, catching COVID is um, raised. Uh, so we will uh, are keen to try and maintain the sort of <coughs> 10 o'clock live broadcasts. Uh, with that in mind, um, the finance uh, team, myself, uh, Peter, our treasurer, Mike, Dyer and Mike Carter, um, we are now just exploring uh, getting a sort of temporary Wi-Fi uh, set up um, in the church. The Wi-Fi be piggybacked from the vicarage here so that we, if we have a service in the church, we can actually um, broadcast it. Um, down at Pentridge, they do have a reasonably good 4G signal there, so I could use a mobile phone, hopefully, um, uh, uh, to, do, to do that. Um, but uh, we're not going to be just we're not going to be going back to the the normal service pattern that we had before. Uh, I think realistically um, we will be able to have one act of worship on Sunday in one of the churches within our group, and that will only be either St Mary's or Pentridge because St Andrew's Gussage is too small. Um, to be able to really maintain any sort of distancing within that building. And of course, there's the issue that we have to go across private land to gain access um, to it. Um, <clears throat> so all that said, I think it's going to be quite challenging. I am hopeful that we might have a act of worship in church um, on the 5th of July, um, providing um, it is uh, reasonable and possible for us to... Um, make sure that the you know the church is covid secure i think is what uh, what is how they're describing it we need to make sure we can do that um first so just ask everybody to bear with us and to be patient and it does mean we are going to have to be flexible so whereas before we might have got used to service times at half past nine ten o'clock eleven o'clock um six p.m in the evening we will have probably one service uh, once a week in one of the either of the two churches and that will probably be at 10 o'clock um, so it coincides with the sort of broadcasting pattern time that we've established uh, over Covid and I think that will probably continue um, through Ju uh, July, August and into September uh, when the government do another review we need to see what's happening with the virus uh, across the country uh, already seeing in other countries that there are areas in other countries where the virus has spiked um, so uh, it, it's going to be an interesting 
a uh, few months with with some challenges there um, weddings can take place we do have a wedding um, booked in for September uh, and I've been in contact with the couple and um, but again of course it looks like that you know whereas they might have wanted 80 more or so or more guests that is not going to be possible and they might be restricted they this magic number of 30 but of course that depends on the size of the church and um, <coughs> that might not actually even be possible in St Mary so we need to have a look at that um, and of course there's going to be no singing of hymns or music um, apart from you know over the speaker system so uh, it, uh, interesting interesting times we shall see um, what happens over the next um, few weeks and the guidance that um, that we get uh, but watch this space but do let me promise you one of the things I do want to assure people of is those folk who are uh, nervous about coming back to church we will absolutely do our best to make sure that the uh, if we are having a service in church that it is broadcast at the same sort of time so you can join in with it um, also going to be interesting for my annual leave because um, I have booked my sort of fortnight off in August I've, I was encouraged to still encouraged to do that would be encouraged to do that by the bishops <laughs> they're not sure where we're going to go but to have some time out so those two Sundays <clears throat> we're going to have to think creatively about that because of course the people who have been helping us lead worship fantastic team of people we've had here who have led morning worship and even song um, quite a few of them are riper in years shall we say and uh, rightly so they may be um, nervous or concerned about coming into a group situation and leading worship which might put them at, at high risk so um, at the moment in a sense our worship leaders are, are myself and, and, and some of the younger people in our team uh, maybe who have led the family service but they might not be used to leading the other forms of worship so one of the solutions that is um, being suggested is that uh, in order for clergy to get their summer leave that um, we produce a pre-recorded pre service so I do a pre-recorded service in here or in the church um, with Kate and whoever and then that would be um, broadcast at the normal time on a Sunday for people to watch so we're going to all have to be <laughs> quite creative in how we get things to work but I think we've done pretty well so far so um, uh, so that will be good. Uh, so, and finally, um, before we get on to the readings, uh, just another plug for our um, new online uh, study course, which we're going to do, which is called The Wisdom House. This will begin on Thursday, the 2nd of July, half past seven. Uh, if you want to be part of that, you do need to send me an email. Uh, I've had a few people who've sent me the requests, so I, I've got those names down. Um, because what we will have to do is send you a Zoom link. You will also need to download Zoom onto either your um, computer or your tablet um, so that you can take part um, in that um, uh, online study uh, using the Wisdom House um, material. So that will be Thursday, the 2nd of June. Uh, this coming Sunday, interestingly enough, it would have been a benefice um, service. Um, it's also the Sunday when lots of people would have been ordained. All the ord ordinations uh, would have happened um, this Sunday. I'm trying to remember what anniversary it is of mine. Might be my twenty. Might even be my uh, 25th um, ordination anniversary. Can't remember. I'll have to look it up. Um, uh, but of course, those ordinations aren't happening. Uh, and I'll give some more information tomorrow about the type of service we'll have on Sunday. It'll be a, a morning prayer type service of some kind, I imagine. Right. So actually, let's have the reading uh, today <coughs> for. Um, John the Baptist, as it's his um, uh, feast day. Uh, the gospel comes from uh, Luke chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 57. Uh, the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy on her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zachariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, none of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. And all of them were amazed. 
Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbours, and these things were talked about through the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. This is the Gospel of the Lord, so the uh, <coughs> Gospel reading for the feast day of the birth of uh, John the Baptist um, today. Uh, so I hope you have a good day today, whatever you're doing. Uh, another lovely sunny day. Uh, the temperature is going to be soaring over today and tomorrow and Friday, I believe. Um, so please do, you know, wear a hat, drink plenty of fluids and um, look after yourselves as well um, uh, in this hot weather. Um, but let's just uh, finish with a prayer. Let's have the colic for John the Baptist. Almighty God, who, who's by, who, whose providence your servant John the Baptist was wonderfully born and sent to prepare the way of your son, our Saviour, by the preaching of repentance, lead us to repent according to his preaching and after his example, constantly to speak the truth, boldly to rebuke vice and patiently to suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, we pray, especially today, we think of all of those who work in the hospitality industry and the news that they have received, that they may be able to open up their premises again. We pray for the many challenges that they will face in uh, organising their businesses um, to make them as safe as possible. We pray also for our churches as they prepare to uh, recommence worship again in the buildings and the challenges and the difficulties we will have to face in order to make that happen. We ask your blessings on us this day. In Jesus name. Amen. So thank you for uh, being with me uh, this morning. I uh, hope you have a lovely day. Let's just close with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you very much. Another plane going overhead to look at the crop circle. <laughs> <laughs>